Hello and welcome to this video, my name is Barry Beckham. In any program we care to use, there's going to be must-know parts of that software. Things we have to know to use the software. But the software is likely to be much more versatile and powerful than we first appreciate. Parts of the software that I call the nice-to-know parts that allow a broader range of creative possibilities. Now, when we're new to the software, we only really need the must-know parts to get started. We can leave the rest until later. In this video, I'm going to try my best to stay on the must-know parts of the software. And I think we need to start by just saying that there are, in fact, two versions, a standard version and a professional version. Now there's a comparison page that's available on the Winsoft website, but I also have a video on the five options that I feel are the most important in the pro version. I'll link to that video below and also to the Winsoft website. The best practice is to copy anything you want to use in your presentation into a dedicated project folder and I emphasize the word copy. Don't use content from here, there, and everywhere on your computer. You'll live to regret it. Content can include images, video clips, music, sound effects, commentary, logos, clip art, animated GIFs, or in fact, all of those. You get the idea. So the file tree on the left-hand side is where we navigate to the project folder where we've placed all of the content we intend to use. So when we select the folder, then we see that content displayed to us in the file list. It's taking a couple of seconds to show us all of the content here. It's doing that because I'm using images here directly from a high resolution digital camera, which records 45 megapixels and the two video files down here are HD. So let's make a start here by moving our cursor down into the slide list, right clicking and creating a blank slide. It's never a bad thing to start and end our slideshow on a blank and we'll create the end blank in a few moments. Now we need to choose from the file list above what we actually want to appear in our presentation. I'm going to drag down this video and maybe the snake. You can see they're of similar tone. The tiger. But you can see I can choose the order in which my images and videos are going to appear in my presentation. But there is a way we can adjust them a little later. Now, if you briefly look back up into the file list, you'll notice that anything that I've selected to use in my slideshow is now highlighted in pale blue. Anything that's showing white means we haven't yet used that, and that's quite useful. So we can select the images and the content in the order we wish it to be viewed, or we can go down to the bottom right and open this screen up into a full screen viewable option where I can simply click, drag and drop. So we could use this screen to change the order of how the images and the videos are going to appear. We can even right click and insert blanks from here too. Once we're complete and we've got everything in the running order we want, we can go back to the slide list. Now I'm going to leave you for just a couple of seconds and I'll select the content above that I want to use for the rest of this demo. The next thing we may want to do is to put a title on our presentation. I'm going to do that in the easiest way possible by selecting the first blank, going down to the Styles and Themes button at the bottom left of the screen, I'm going to select Styles, and what I'm looking for here is Captions. 
And here we can see all of the automatic settings that we have. And if you look at the thumbnail at the top right, it gives you an idea of what's going to happen to the title. Caption pan up, caption zoom in. If we select them, we get a view of exactly what they're going to do. We're all going to choose something different. So I'll stay with this second one. And down here, I'll just put my title in. and apply. It's as easy as that. Now at some stage we may want to think about the length of the videos that we're going to use because if you look at the first one down here you'll notice it's 21 seconds or almost 22 seconds in length so I doubt I'm going to need all of that. You'll also notice that the default slide duration that we can see at the bottom right corner of every one of these image thumbnails is seven seconds. So my guess is we're probably going to want something similar, maybe 10, maybe 12, but probably no more than that. So how do we achieve that? Well, we can quite easily remove the end of this little clip by the positioning of the next image, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. But there are times, quite often I would suggest, that we may want to lose a little bit from the start of the video. Now, the way that I like to do that, because I don't use video that much, I'm going to go down to the extreme bottom right corner of this screen and open up the timeline. Once we're in the timeline, we can put the cursor at the start of this video and we can press play. So we get a chance to view it. So if I stopped it at that point, let me stop it there. If I stopped it at that point, the pelican has just moved onto the screen. So there's one second, two seconds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, so by about ten, certainly over 12 seconds, the pelican is almost gone from the screen. So what we could do here is just move our cursor to the position where we want the video to start. So I want to lose a few seconds at the start here. So with this selected, right click and choose trim from the beginning of the video. And that's just done exactly what we've asked for. Now the video starts with the pelican on screen. So now I can choose exactly where I want this to be faded out. And I think by the time the head of the bird is gone, something about there. So this image needs to come back to somewhere like that. And as you can see, I've done that with a simple click and drag. Put the cursor back and we can have a little look just to make sure we're happy with what we've done. And of course, at the completion of this presentation, we'll be listening to the music as well. Now I think I could move that image back a little further. So this is the sort of thing we would do. We would pick up the little tag, move it back a couple of seconds, and I think that's positioned quite nicely. Now at the moment, I've chosen not to use the second video clip that I've got available in the file list, but who knows, I may decide to use it later. This piece of video is considerably longer than the Pelican video, so I'd have to do exactly the same here, because I do know that there's a section of this video that needs to be trimmed from the front. But we can do that quick and easy, as you've just seen. Just for the moment, I'm going to go down to the extreme bottom right and go back to the slide list. Now, one of the things we must remember to do all the time is to save our project file as we make changes to the presentation we're making. We can do that with file save as, or if we've already created a name, we can save over the top. But here's a tip. If you look up at the top left, you'll see the title of mine is now called My Slideshow 2. If you remember, we started with My Slideshow. So every time I make quite a large change to my presentation, I may save it, but I'll save it with a different name. My slideshow 2, 3, 4, 5. These are very small files, but it's quite often the case that you'll do something one afternoon 
And when you look at your presentation the next morning, decide that wasn't a good way to go. Well, it's nice to be able to drop back to the previous version and pick up from there. Not essential, one of those nice things to know. Now we do still need to select our music and we'll come to that shortly. But what we have to address next is a situation we can see clearly here. This thumbnail doesn't seem to fit very well and we can tell that by the black bars that are shown left and right. We can see this to a greater or lesser degree with other images. The black bars here are slightly narrower, wider here, and here they're very thin but top and bottom. The simple explanation for that. We're making a 16-9 aspect ratio slideshow and the images have been shot using a camera that recalls 3-2 aspect ratio. So we've got to make sure all of our content fits the size of the presentation we intend to make. There's a couple of ways we can do this. You'll notice that it's not the case with the video, of course, because the video was shot at 16-9 aspect ratio. So if I select the first of my images and hold the shift key and scroll to the right and select the last one, what I could do is address all of these together using my styles and themes. If I go to the styles and we go to the image menu, there's the option we're looking for, image, cover, screen. So I can either double click here or just select and apply. And you'll see all of the images nicely pop into place and now they all look right. Now I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that change and I'm going to apply it in a slightly different way. This time I'm going to select my video as well. I'm going to hold the shift key and select the last of the images in the show. I'm going to go back to the styles and themes, but this time I'm going to go to themes. Themes are a collection of styles that are made for us. And in the main tab here, we've got a selection called Ken Burns effect. I'm going to select those and apply. Now what you'll notice is all of the images now fit the screen and all of the images, including the video, now has a nice gentle pan and zoom. So let me just select one of these images to remove the selections. And wouldn't this be a great time to go to File, Save As, and change this to Slideshow 3 because I have made a significant change. So now we can think about adding our music. I could drag my music from the file list above left down into the slide list here if I wish. I prefer to add the music in the timeline which we get to at the bottom right of the screen because as I do that you can see a little bit better exactly what happens because it drops into a position wherever my cursor is which then enables me to show you that all we need to do is click and drag to position the music anywhere we want it. Well now we've got some creative decisions to make. Does the music fit the amount of content we've got? Now for this demonstration, my music is a little bit longer than I actually require. So do I want to use the start of the music and fade out at the end? Do I want to use the end of the music and fade in at the start? Now that's all going to be a personal choice. I think for this little demonstration here, I'm going to choose to use the end of the music. I'm going to fade in the start. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to drag the front of the music in because what I need to do is line up the end of it and I need to do that a little more I think. I don't think I've got enough taken off. We can always reverse this in a moment so don't worry if you take too much of this away. Still got too much I think but let's move it to the left. Let's have a quick look. We're getting there, but I need a bit more off. Sorry about this whizzing backwards and forwards, but 
that's actually the real world, so to speak. Whoops, picked up the wrong thing. Let's get this into place. One final change here. Let's bring it past that point, and I think I can get this nicely positioned. So I would be looking something like that. We can fiddle and change this as we go along because we may, may increase the distance between each of these images or we may decrease them. We need to see that in operation, I think. Let's bring that back to the start. We can also make a choice. Do we want the music to start when the first image appears or when the title's on screen? Well, look at the WAV file here. By pure chance, it looks like it may be better if I start my music with this first piece of video, because this looks to be somewhat different to this bit here. So I'm going to drag this a little bit further forward to that point. And now I'm going to fade the music in. I'm going to choose quite a nice distance. I'm going to put a little marker on the volume line there. A little marker here and then I'm going to drag it down. That's it. But on this particular demonstration, what I'm also going to do, so I don't drown out my talking, just for this demo, I'm going to drag this down a little bit. Hopefully I've got that about right. And I really need to do the same up here. I shouldn't really have one there. Let's take that one away with a right click. So now we can watch and listen. Didn't look and sound too bad, did it? Now, just for the moment, let me scroll to the right and we'll just test the end here. I'm going to put my cursor at this point. Remember, I've got the sound right down here. In fact, I may even bring it up a little bit. You can remove any of these little sound points with a right click at any time. So we can tidy this up a little bit later on. This is what I'm doing just for demo purposes. So I'm going to put my cursor there and press play. And we'll just watch and listen and see how things work with the blank here. I think we could do with a longer fade out. So I'm going to match the fade a lot more to the way the music fades. So with the cursor at that point, let's press play. Now the blank needs a bit of adjustment here, but that's quite typical. I can pick up the tab and just bring it back a little bit. And maybe I was a bit optimistic with the fade. I'll make the fade a little bit tighter. But it all depends on when we get the music back to its full volume. It may impact this end part, but that's all part of the creative process. Now I could now end this program and publish my show at this point. But before I do anything else, perhaps I should think about saving this as my slideshow for. Now, as you can see here, I've returned to the slide list. But what I've also done is I've published the show, and I think it may be a good idea if we view exactly what we've made here. The entire video so far is about 19 minutes long. The slideshow that I've created is about 1 minute and 40 seconds. So let's view it and then we'll take a look at one or two of the other creative opportunities open to us and exactly how we publish our show.
It's not a bad presentation, is it, given the time we've worked on it? Less than 20 minutes, and that includes talking through this step-by-step -step video. One of the more creative aspects of audiovisual presentations like this is how we can match the changing of the images and the videos to be synchronized to the soundtrack. For example, if we look along the soundtrack here, and we'd certainly be able to hear this, but quite often we can see visual evidence in the WAV file here. So it could be that this image, if I pick up just the tag, I can move just this image to match a little peak in that music if it was appropriate. If I pick up the tag, I can move any one of these images individually. But if I select just the image, you'll notice I'll move not only this one, but all those following it too. It's quite useful when you get into making audio visuals in a practical way. So the timeline window is very good to synchronize images and video to our soundtrack, but it also allows us to quickly and easily adjust the transition length. For example, sometimes if we see a piece of music here, look, where it's indicating that the music tails off here just before the peak, well, maybe we can use this to first of all match up where the image is going to appear and we'd need to watch and listen, but we can also increase the transition so we could have the transition slightly longer. And then we would put the cursor at this point and we'd have a quick view and listen to what we've done. Now, as I bring you back here into the slide list window, can I remind you that so far we've just been using the default transition style and duration a two second fade. But we can change the transition style for one image and we'd need to select it or a number of them. So if I wanted to change the transition style of three images, I could select them, then click the little AB and choose from one of the many options we're given. Publishing our presentation once we've completed it to a universal MP4 video that will play almost anywhere is simple. Let's go to the top right of the screen to the publish show. I'm going to choose HD and 4K video. In the presets option, I'm going to leave the 1920 1080 set. I need to make no changes here at all but I do want to make sure that I select 60p here. That's going to make all of the transitions and the animations super smooth. The file we're about to produce will be saved in the same project folder we've been using all along. Please ignore my title there of slideshow 4a. That's just to allow me to make some changes while talking to you. But all I would need to do here is click OK and it says a video file of that name already exists. Do I want to overwrite this file? Click yes, and it will take a few minutes to make your video. Here, I don't want to overwrite it because I want to use that in the demonstration. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, can I encourage you to consider subscribing to my channel? And if you hit that notification bell, then YouTube will tell you whenever I post a new video. Below I'll link to videos that support this one and also where you can find the software PTE AV Studio. I've been using this software for over 20 years so I know it and its capabilities pretty well. I'll see you next time.